Okay. Uh, I mean, presenting a history of one's workplace is never easy. Um, I've got my kind of version of events, which may not necessarily correspond with my colleagues or those outside of the school. In putting together this short talk, I've picked some brains, uh, but not in a particularly systematic manner. I've also used John's book uh, on the struggle and achievement of Holloway, uh, 1980 to 2002, just in, to fill in some of the early history. I've got 10 minutes, so it's, not it's going to be fairly condensed and probably lacking in anecdotes and funny stories, which really make the history of a workplace. Um, and what I haven't got either is sort of the, anything about the alumni, all the students we've graduated and where they've gone to. I mean, Fiona Redding, who's uh, in, responsible for alumni events and activities in the school, has kindly given me lots of anecdotes, but I haven't been able to thread them in. But that will maybe go into a written uh, version of the history later on. Okay, just in terms of where the school started from, the school developed from a, series, uh, from a service provision initially created in the Department of Chemistry uh, to give students some management education. First degrees were all minors, chemistry with management. Somewhat ironically, uh, the minor grew into a major uh, when in October 1990 the Centre for Management Studies started and chemistry closed. <laughs> The, the centre was later called the National Westminster Centre for Management Studies, following the initial sponsorship. And then it turned into a full department and simply the School of Management. Uh, it expanded in the uh, Moore building, Moore being a prominent uh, chemistry professor. So we're still honouring that uh, name, even though we've, uh, we no longer have chemistry in the, the college. The people behind these changes were uh, Dorothy Wedderburn, the then principal, who commissioned Sandra Dawson, uh, f who was at Imperial, to, who recommended the creation of a Centre for Management Studies. The first director, Charles Harvey, who can't be with us, and the deputy director, Rob Fitzgerald. Is Robert here? No, Robert can't be with us either. But he's still with us in the school. Um, uh, they, they came out of the history department to make the school happen. And you've got to make something happen. Now, having origins in, or, the origins in business history is fairly unique, I think, for a school of management uh, in the UK. And history is still an important reference point for, for the school. In, expansion of student numbers was fairly rapid, while staffing lagged behind. Uh, Staff-student ratios in the early days rose to 30 to 1, before more appointments were made in the, in the late 1990s. Colleagues from those early years who are still in the school, Derek Chong, um, Romano Dyson, Catherine Liston Hayes, who we're hoping to get back in 2012, Alan Pilkington, Marianne Boyer, uh, Mike Gold, and Sukhdev Johal, experienced the, the pressures of building new degree programs and processes in a very constrained uh, conditions. I can hear my colleagues saying, well, there's no change there then. Um, but I think actually the opening and completion of this new building, the creation of the new faculty, and a greater commitment, I think, from the college to further investment means that there has really been a genuine sea change in the relationship between the school and college. Originally, teaching was all through joint degrees and exclusively with sciences. It was management with maths, with computer science, with physics, with chemistry. Uh, well, when chemistry was still here. It was not until 1994 that the single honours programme, the uh, BSc Management Studies, started. A PhD programme started quite early and was an important part of the research uh, underpinnings of the school and is steadily expanding today. And I think we've got around 75 uh, PhD students registered and around 100 have graduated through the school since uh, we opened in. 21 years ago. Talk management programs began with in-company diplomas offered in the early days uh, of the school. The MBA or Masters of Business Administration, the MBA being the kind of global brand in management education, was the first um, postgrad degree uh, program to start. An in-company worldwide MBA was offered through Flemings, later JP Morgan, and taught by school faculty in cities around the world. This experience to quit uh, staff for winning University of London External Programs MBA, which we've delivered uh, since 2000. 
um, both to students around the world and through partnerships with um, Hong Kong. Uh, on campus, joint master's degree started with, uh, in addition to the MBA with computer science, the MSc in business information started in 1998 and was aimed mainly at science graduates who were looking for what the British Computer Society called hybrid managers, bringing together IT skills with management skills. An MA in European business was established by Michael Gold, as Michael is here, uh, not long after that, and then later on an MA in Asia-Pacific business was set up by Bob uh, Fitzgerald. I mean, both those area-based uh, degrees sort of highlight one area of competence in the school, which is sort of the emphasis on management as a culturally uh, defined uh, practice. It's not something which is uh, the same everywhere. Uh, an MSc in sustainability and management was developed in the mid-2000s as a unique program, which is joint with geography, and uh, one of the first programs to stress uh, the importance of ecological and sustainable business uh, and having geography on board gives it real credibility. Uh, an MSc in international management provided uh, pre-experienced non-management students with an MBA-style MBA conversion program, and this has proved to be hugely successful. This, together with an MSc in international accounting and an MSc in leadership management and health, were created during Ewan Furley's uh, time in the school. During my time, and I sort of stepped down in, in August, uh, I managed to create a few programs as well. That was the MA in Marketing, the MSc in International HRM, and the MSc in Entrepreneurship, all of which have been uh, recruiting quite successfully. Overall, we've had about 8,000, about, this is, sounds like a very accurate number, 8,318 students um, have graduated from Royal Holloway with some form of management degree whether that's a major or a minor, some form. So that's a significant number in the 21 years. Uh, this year, we've got over 800 postgraduate taught students alongside about 1,100 uh, undergrads and, as I say, the 75 postgraduate taught, taught students. The School of Management developed when the college finances were a bit shaky. Um, I think paintings had been sold um, and it was... I think that was a one-off. They weren't going to do that again. So the School of Management was seen as a way of, of shoring up shaky finances. And it's true that the, the achieve, one of the achievements of the school has been to, to be a major contributor to college growth, revenues, and students. The school grew when I started in 1998. There were 17 academics. There are now around 65 permanent academics with many more on fixed-term contracts. Administrative staff when I started was Marianne and a couple of others, including Helen Bottomley, who's still in the college. Uh, but now Marie, Marie Gallagher on the admin side has a team of around 20 uh, administrators. The school is also di differentiated in its time. It's extremely strong in accounting, marketing, international business, entrepreneurship, organization studies, and HRM. It's got five key um, uh, departments. And I won't sort of sig pull them up, uh, signal them all, but the accounting group is one of the strongest in research in the 1994 group. Marketing is one of the biggest uh, in the southeast with significant research expertise in consumer marketing. Research and research-informed teaching has been central to the school. Nearly 90% of staff have been returned as research active in recent uh, research assessment exercises. We've had two uh, strong research centers in public services management and sustainability. Colleagues have produced standard teaching texts in international accounting, international HRM, uh, marketing, and arts management. Um, colleagues have also won best paper prizes in international journals and conferences. Many of our professors have very high citations, which helps in terms of college um, rankings, global rankings, with citations as an important indicator. Um, we've also, as a collective, produced a, a Cambridge University book in 2008 that I was sort of instrumental in putting together, which was on the subject of management between global and local, emphasizing again the kind of international context. In terms of a contribution of a school to the college, while many business and management schools drift away from the host institution, the school dropped the NatWest company uh, affiliation fairly early on. 
and, and has been happy to be identified as Royal Holloway School of Management. The school's been called a cash cow for the college. Um, over the last five years, it's also true that about 60% of the college's surpluses have been generated from the school. But the label doesn't quite fit. In the Boston Consultancy Group categories, cash cows have large, a large share of a slow-growing market. Uh, management education is far from slow-growing. It all could, also could be said that the school's being perceived by, by uh, what Boston Consultancy Group called a problem child. Uh, growing rapidly and consuming a lot. Um, but again, this is probably not particularly accurate. Um, I think a more detailed history of the school than what's possible in the 10-minute talk would reveal that the a kind of uneasy ecology between school and college, but developments going along um, a kind of incremental pathway towards greater autonomy, but within the idea that the school is in, has an embedded status as part of the college. <clears throat> Just in terms of a few quick metrics, um, I won't run through the, the research exercise anymore, but we've been doing very well in the RAE. Um, just in terms of student recruitment, the admissions this year, 35% of all students admitted went to arts, 30% went to sciences, and 35% went to the Faculty of Management and Economics. Of those, 27.5% of students went to the School of Management. <clears throat> so I think we, we've become a significant player uh, in the school in terms of students. The school has been at the center of recruitment of international students, which now make up nearly 25% of students in the college. The, the school is responsible for about 65% of all overseas non-EU students. Leadership roles in the college, we, the faculty, college, and uh, overseas, through overseas trips. We also whether it's positive or not, we, uh, the current president of the union is also a management student. Um, okay, in moving on to new developments, and this is rather a quick thing, a quick uh, run through, um, I'm delighted to introduce the new head of the School of Management, uh, Jeffrey Uniman, who liked us so much that he left and then came back from Manchester University uh, earlier this summer. And it had nothing to do with the weather. It's because we're very nice. So, Jeffrey. Thank you, Chris. Um, Sonia has set me a very difficult task. She's asked me to talk in just two minutes, and no academic can ever talk for just two minutes. As a famous correspondent once said, I'm terribly sorry for writing such a long letter. I didn't have time to write a short one. Uh, now, in order to help me talk just for two minutes, I've made some detailed notes, but not too detailed, hopefully. Um, Chris has highlighted some of the key milestones uh, in our 21-year journey from, I think, what would be considered to be relatively humble beginnings uh, to become today's vibrant, strong, and growing school of management. We've got a magnificent new building. Uh, thank you very much to, to Paul and to the college for, uh, for, 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 for helping us realize this vision, and to Ewan, who was the person who came up with the vision in the first place, and Chris, who saw it through. Um, but in addition to the new building, as Chris has, has, has highlighted, we've got a highly talented body of staff who provide innovative teaching, research excellence, and very smooth administration uh, for us and our students. Um, and uh, I'm delighted to have been given the opportunity and honor of leading the next phase um, of the school's exciting development. This future development is going to continue many of the important traditions of the school, including having a strong research ethos, producing world-class research output that informs our, cut, uh, that informs our cutting edge teaching, and also, as Paul indicated and as Chris indicated, being an integral part of Royal Holloway. So I think it's important to recognize that the ongoing success of the School of Management is closely integrated uh, with the ongoing success of Royal Holloway as a whole, both relying on the strength of the college and contributing towards this success and the strength of the college. Uh, I'm very grateful to all of my predecessors who have brought the school to its current position and especially to Chris Smith uh, for his excellent leadership of the school over the past few years, 
and his role in developing and leading the Faculty of Management and uh, the Faculty of Management and Economics. And we're looking forward to working with Bob in the coming years in, uh, in, his, in his role of the incoming dean uh, to further consolidate our excellent position. Uh, with that, uh, I, I'm left to hand over, I think, to Chris again, who is going to uh, introduce Sir Alec Reid and the main event tonight. Thank you. I'm delighted that Sir Alec uh, is here. He's had uh, a 30-year association with the college and an involvement with the school since its inception. In fact, he was sort of before it was really uh, here as a school. Maybe the ideas for the school were also um, part of Sir Alec's thinking. Sir Alec is the founder of Reed Executive, one of the largest recruitment firms in the country. As a key member of College Council in the 1980s, he led the financial side of the merger with Bedford College and played an active role in the development of the School of Management. He was Professor of Enterprise and Innovation in the school and taught a hugely popular undergraduate course on Leadership, Innovation and Enterprise, or LIES, as he liked to call it. But we all know that management has got nothing to do with LIES. He continues to have a strong link with the school, especially through the MSc in entrepreneurship and with the college through the student-led Royal Holloway Entrepreneurs. I know he does not like the name entrepreneur, preferring enterprise, uh, which can be applied within organizations. I joined the School of Management in January 1998 as the Reed Professor of Organization Studies. I benefited from research support provided by the Reed Foundation, which indirectly uh, contributed to some of my uh, papers, one of which actually won a prize, which I think is indirectly was, uh, attributed to Sir Alec in terms of the funding. I'm really delighted that Sir Alec is able to be here for the 21st anniversary of the school. Sir Alec. And I said, well, do it. Yes, you do it. 
Um, God, I know your strengths. And so I had to exercise myself physically, and I thought, it, it would be terrible to run up against this because half the people will never be able to do that. They'd be so disappointed. And their friends would pull their legs for the rest of their life. And the other half will never get a job to do They all want to employ an entrepreneur. You know, if they're not after the customers, they're after the pencil or whatever. So I said, much better to call it many by schools. And then I'm um, very keen in my innovation. I've built my business on ideas. And I'm very keen on innovation. So I introduced innovation And I, I thought that sounded like uh, a glass of tonic, where, and it needed a good slug of gin. Right so the slug of gin I put in it was lies, ever, leadership. And it's my wife, wife to point out that uh, uh, that sounds good. She put around the way you were teaching lies. So it actually, we come to that, and it was a great success. And I think um, it's very true. Half of business is lies. Uh, and they don't pay it on Zoom. Because there's no certainty. You know, you put down the price, are you going to sell more? Maybe. You put out the price, are you going to sell less? Maybe. So I think, and, and the last thing they tell you at Harvard, we've been on Harvard, of course, and spent billions on course. They say half oh, we're told we've been rubbish. People <laughs> don't decide what half. <laughs> Anyway, what I thought I'd talk about, I um, didn't um, know quite what to talk about. And I, I thought I'd tell you about the threat. Something that I've seen happen, you may not see it, you may not care, but it could represent an enormous opportunity for business education. And I, if I start on um, a book that I read um, recently, and it's, it's called Well IQ, Wealth Nation. And I've always been um, fascinated by IQ and genes and what they produce. And this is out of Belfast University, or Arsenal University, I'm not sure which, and a uh, professor and research assistant have done a tremendous amount of research and come up with IQs around the world and different national IQs. And the thesis of the book is that the world with co countries with high IQ is going to do well. Wealth of nations, one would know, going to have enough time. I'm not sure I completely subscribe to that because it's a it's profile of IQ, you don't know, want genes, you don't want to so you want an elephant profile. But I picked that up and I thought, um, if that's true of nations, how true it must be of companies. So at a number of level, companies generally are looking for intelligence. And they're, they're now more set, I mean, you read these. Lucky or are they lucky? Physicists at the university go and work for the, the, the uh, hedge funds and earn billions. And they're, they're not looking for anything but brains. I mean, they're not looking for management education. And so we find, I mean, in that company, if I use my own company, we employ about 3,500 people. And I've just done a little research this week. I didn't have to go far. In my own office, which is really foundational. 80% of our company is owned by our charity. And these guys, there are probably 10 of them, they're incredibly bright because any graduate trainee that joins Freeze has to be incredibly bright. I mean, I, I introduced intelligence tests 15 years ago for graduate training. And of course, it had to be. And my opinion was these kids were coming, shiny, nervous, and they passed the exam, they were told their results, and they came in what they thought for the interview. And my opinion was I'd shake their hand and say, come and sit down. You've got the job, now you've got half an hour to decide what you want to. And that was true, I never changed my mind. If anybody passed the test, they, they got the job. There were one or two mistakes, we almost had an escape from Bobby at prison where we had an office, but uh, <laughs> generally we got back in quite well. So we didn't introduce these <coughs> intelligence tests, and we've got on with it. I'm looking around my office now. And, um, there's 10 people in there, and I last couple of days I've been reminding myself with them of what degrees they've got. They're all graduate management, sure, and, and high management. And there's uh, uh, Jewish studies, the fantastic little Jewish business studies, it's just Jewish studies, uh, music, um, fine art, war studies, everything but management. And so then I took that little case study stage further and I looked at our directors. We've got a group of about 
six companies directly report to the trade. They've all got non-relevant degrees. Except, of course, post graduates who are accountants. Everybody has every good account, so a college pension, every good company has a point of account. And there's a little movement in the one HR director who's qualified. So this is the trade I, I see to companies. It, it, uh, my company is not in isolation. I can tell you, it's, it's spread everywhere. But this is the group, this is the threat of companies, the opportunity for you. Uh, the, they're good, they're fantastic people we employ, they've got tremendous war brains, and they learn quickly, but they've never had any, any education. And they need, I mean, they are be so we're, we're, we're in a world market now, we're competing with the world. We need every advantage we can possibly gain. And they're hollow, they're not, they've come straight into them, they haven't been gained. Uh, in uh, management studies or business studies. And I just wonder whether business schools could reach out to the rest of their faculties and insert modules of, of um, business so that I honestly believe that there's a whole lot of people there outside business school that intend going into business. And you would be doing business and then a head of a failure if you could follow my mind. I mean, life is half of I'm not quite sure the technicality of that one. A module would be one day a week for three years. That would be incredibly powerful if you could put a business module on, on the, the arts and the sciences and even the music. Anybody who wants it. But those that want it, that are the, the, the stars, I mean, what business is looking for is stars. It's the people with three days a day level. That's a rough time. And if business did that, they would be doing an enormous service. To business and, and consumers. And so you've got rough time there, we all got incredibly rough time. Uh, after said to me, she suggested I spoke about the uh, problems in uh, Eurozone. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> and I thought I knew nothing about the Eurozone, nothing about the Sunshine. So, uh, <laughs> so uh, Keep calm and carry on. <laughs> <laughs> I'm taking from the same organise. I think you know, the rough weather we're in, it's all hands on deck. Thank you very much.